Chapter 4. Go Pick Hawthorns on That Mountain Xu Feng Yan left the Tingchao Pavilion and came to the stable, where there was a lone, russet-colored horse with a lame leg. Old Huang was grumbling at the horse when he spotted Prince Xu. He grinned from ear to ear, his two missing front teeth in full view, painting an altogether goofy scene. Xu Feng Yan spoke. Old Huang, what happened to the case you always carry on your back? When travelling outside, Old Huang carried among his luggage a rectangular red sandalwood casket, and there was a curious story around it. Xu Feng Yan's numerous requests to look at it had all been rejected. Back at Qinghe County, Xu Feng Yan had sneaked off to check it out when Old Huang was taking a dump, but the casket was bone-chillingly cold and he caught wind chill afterwards. That was the last time he entertained the idea of tampering with it. To this day, Xu Feng Yan still vividly recalled how, after they escaped the pursuit of murderous bandits, he had asked the groom, Old Huang, are you a skilled fighter? Old Huang had nodded somewhat sheepishly then. Xu Feng Yan had pressed on. You the highly skilled kind. Old Huang seemed even more embarrassed and had nodded again. Thinking of the heroic spectacle earlier, when they were chased by a gang carrying spears and blades, he asked again. How high exactly? Old Huang blinked for a moment before raising his hand to a point not very high, apparently. Xu Feng Yan's resentment towards the Grand Consul stemmed not only from the latter forgetting to dispatch a skilled escort, but also due to his failure to impact the simple wisdom of caution when venturing out in the wild. On the contrary, he smothered Xu Feng Yan with money and treasures, making him a helpless juicy lamb for anyone to exploit. Everyone saw him as a ravishing target to pounce upon. It was a godsend that they met White Foxface later on, who agreed to accept the second half of the scriptures of sacrifice in exchange for escorting him back to Ling province. Xu Feng Yan walked into the stable with his sigh and lamented, Oh, red hair, if my sister ever saw this once noble steed, now reduced to a sorry state through mistreatment. I can't guarantee she won't give me a hard time. These three years, one Jeer falcon, one horse, plus an old servant whose eyesight had thankfully not faded, comprised his entire world. Reminded that White Foxface was still in the city, he planned to go out of the place with old Huang to have some fun. He just got out of the stable when he saw Maester Jia from Mount Longhu. Xu Feng Yan pulled in the old Taoist by the shoulder and whispered cunningly, Hey, old guy, it's a good thing that my brother's going to Mount Longhu, but you got to show me some courtesy, huh? Exasperation on his face, the old Taoist took out an ancient book and said wistfully, this art of Gladius. Never did he expect Xu Feng Yan to instantly lose his humor, as Prince Xu pointed toward the Tingchao Pavilion and chided. You disappoint me. If I wanted some secret tome, need I go anywhere else? It was only then that the old Taoist recalled the existence of a martial literature archive within the palace called Tingchao Pavilion. At a loss, he said, Then what shall I do? Xu Feng Yan lowered his voice. Any comely young female disciples at Mount Longhu? The old Taoist whispered back with much distress. Since your highness is interested in exploring the way of Taoism, I am willing to point you to one or two female disciples. Xu Feng Yan gave him the thumbs up. Way to go. 
Immediately, the old Taoist, one of Mount Longhu's three celestial masters, added anxiously, One must pick an auspicious time to initiate the discipleship. If we still don't head to Mount Longhu by today, we'll miss the timing and it won't all go well for Longshang. Xu Fengyan knitted his eyebrows. It's got to be right now. Maester Zhao nodded in assent. Right now. On the way to find Xu Longxiang, the Taoist inadvertently turned his head and glanced at the old groom smiling innocently by the stable. The weightiness of his steps finally lightened somewhat. Xu Fengyan came to his brother's yard and found the kid squatting while observing ants. He walked over and patted his brother's head, speaking straight to the point. Stop looking. The ants at Mount Longhu are bigger. Go over there and look at them. Chop chop, learn some skills so you can leave the mountain earlier. And bring me a satchel of wild hawthorns, you hear? Xu Longxiang rose to his feet and gave a reluctant nod. Xu Fengyan cackled. Long Zhang, my silly brother. See him? He's your master from now on. Once you reach Mount Longu, you can hit anyone, just not him. If anyone dares to call you fool, just beat them senseless. Or write home, and I'll take our northern young cavalry to rampage Mount Longu. Remember, don't let them bully you. In this world, only we brothers and our two sisters get to be bullies. Xu Longxiang nodded, somewhat bewildered. Their separation was imminent. Prince Xu Fengyan stood facing his brother, muttering softly. Silly brother. I won't be able to help wipe off your drool anymore. But I promise you, I'll continue to help you find the most beautiful girl in the world to be your wife. If she's unwilling, we'll drag her to the newlywed room if we have to. With reddened eyes, Xu Fengyan turned to the old Taoist and said, Old guy, like I said... Don't let anyone bully Longxiang. Zhu Feng Yan may be a ne'er-do-well Casanova with no strength in his arms, but you should know the consequences. The old Taoist gave a wry smile and nodded. The escorting entourage, led by Qi Dangguo, gradually departed. Neither Xu Feng Yan nor Xu Xiao accompanied them out of the city. Xu Feng Yan joined old Huang and managed a quiet laugh. No mood to drink booze today. How about later? The old servant laughed in agreement.